Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of Paratalk and on this episode I am once again joined by Rob from the How Haunted podcast. It's been a little while since he's been on but I thought, you know what, on this episode we're going to do a catch up. So without further ado, alright Rob, how are you mate? Never been better miss, how are you? I'm alright, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a warm day here, it's getting, the sun is coming out today, it's quite nice. Oh, well I'm in the northeast and it's as it always is, it's grey. <laughs> It's not particularly warm. I mean, we had a torrential downpour overnight. Everywhere's flooded. So, um, yeah, that's the one of the perks of living in the northeast of England. Well, we've got the most Greggs of any city in in the UK, though, in Newcastle. So that's I mean, swings around about, isn't it? Plenty of sausage rolls, and then plenty yeah. of those uh, baked bean and what are they? Some baked bean and something pies. Yeah, I, I don't know. Sausage <laughs> sausage rolls, my go to. Lovely. Yep, it can't be a sausage roll. It can't be a good sausage roll, especially the ones where so they're slightly soggy in the middle. Yeah, but don't put them in the microwave. But do them in the oven. Can't microwave sausage rolls; they go horrible. Anyway, so you've been um, uh, you've been quite busy, and I know you've been out and about for a couple of times uh, doing uh, some sort of mini investigations. But give us a bit of a wrap up for the listeners that don't know who you are, what you've been doing, and where you've been doing it. I mean, since we last spoke, I've done quite a lot. I've I've done a couple of investigations, which I've, I've covered in some way, shape or form on the podcast. So last summer, I did an organised investigation with a, a lovely group called Spiritus Paranormal, which we did at the Bose Railway Museum near Sunderland. Mm-hmm. That was good. Now, that was that was last August. It was a lovely, lovely summer's evening with a few things happening. And I covered that in a three part episode across September. And then on the Patreon, I did a four hour episode based on the that night using the audio from the investigation itself and then the beginning of this year i did a an organized uh like a fundraising investigation at the literary and philosophical society in newcastle um, and mm-hmm. back at the beginning of january which was a patreon episode and the rest of the time i've been doing all sorts um i mean the, the standard episodes as you'll know generally focus on a place somewhere in normally in the uk but somewhere sometimes a little further afield where we look at the history, the ghost stories, and, and occasionally, if I've been there, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what happened when I was there. January was Haunted Doll Month. I did a, a two-part episode on Haunted Dolls, and then the Patreon episode, I spent 48 hours alone with a haunted doll that I bought as my only company. How did that go? Um, it was it was interesting. I mean, to be honest, I expected absolutely nothing to happen. Uh, as you can imagine, I bought the doll from eBay, which is the go-to place. Of course, yeah, it's where they all are. Yeah, yeah, it's where, that's where you go for your haunted doll needs. <laughs> I seen I seen an interesting um, Higgy Pop um, piece in the last few, well, the last week or so, where they were curious as to if there was a profit to be made by buying dolls from charity shops and car booth sales and giving them a spooky backstory and whacking them on eBay and clearly is based on his findings. But I mean, that's what I assumed it would be. I thought, you know what, I've paid £10. That's what my haunted doll cost. I expected absolutely nothing to happen, but I was in a hotel room alone with a doll, when, which is why I ensured that the door was locked because I didn't want a cleaner walking in and seeing me sitting in a hotel room, sitting on the bed with a doll next to us. In your pyjamas. That was the, sc- the thing I was most scared about, about the entire thing. People, uh, I was going to say people are thinking I'm a weirdo. People finding out that I'm a weirdo. <laughs> um, but it it was interesting. I mean, as I said, I don't know where the, the story came from that went with the eBay listing. Before I bought it, I did send some photos of the doll over to a, somebody I know who's local to the Northeast who's a medium. And I said, no context. What do you think? And they were sending us messages back saying, oh, like, I've got a headache. I don't like the look of that doll. I'm sensing fire. And none of what they were saying matched up with the story that supposedly came with the doll. But I thought, okay, you know what? I will buy it. 
and see what happens. A couple of things happened. So I, I, at one point I said to the doll, like, do you want to harm us? And at that point the TV came on. I couldn't even find the remote control. Then I realised that it was underneath the TV at the opposite end of the room. The second night I was there, and this is a bit of a, a spoiler for anybody who eventually listens to the episode, but the second night I was there, I put the doll on a chair, and there's photos on, on my Instagram of, of the chair, because it is quite wide. Okay. When I woke up in the morning, the doll was on the floor, Ooh. and it could have easily fallen over because it was quite a top-heavy doll. Like the, the head was, I wouldn't say porcelain, but it was made of something quite weighty, and the rest of the doll was just fabric. So it could have easily fallen over, but when I listened back to the audio, because I was a digital voice recorder on a table just in front of the doll, mm-hmm. you can hear me gently snoring in the background because I managed to get some sleep. And what what sounds like footsteps walking around in the room. Ooh. And I would have said that the footsteps were maybe in the room above or in the corridor or in the room next door, but they definitely get louder just before you hit, hear the doll's head at the ground. Where was the building that you stayed? Did it have any, has it got any history? It's a hotel, and the city the hotel is in will remain nameless because I managed to persuade a local medium that was recommended to us to come and cleanse the room after I'd left, and they said that they'd do it on the condition that I didn't mention them. So it was a hotel a good 300 miles from where I was. I was away for work, and I just thought, you know what, um, I'll kill two birds with one stone, and I'll, I'll bring a haunted doll with us and just not tell any of my colleagues. The building dates back to the late 1800s, and as far as I can tell, it hasn't got a particularly interesting history. Nothing untoward appears to have happened there. There's no ghost stories related to it. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'll never know. But um, that, that, was, that was really interesting. I've done loads of stuff on the podcast. I mean, the podcast's fortnightly now, but in October for spooky season, I'm going back to weekly, so I'm, I'm already turned my attention to what I'm going to do for that, because that's going to be a very special month. I take it the doll went back on eBay. No, it's in the Billy Corridor, Marks and Spencer's carrier bag. <laughs> For two reasons. One, I'm, I'm not, not bringing it in the house. No. Um, and two, people seem to love that episode. Th- there's two episodes I've done since we last spoke that I've had probably the most feedback about. One being the doll episode, which, as I say, is um, on the Patreon, but there is a seven-day free trial of the Patreon, so people are able to hear it. And the other episode I got a lot of feedback about was me Christmas special, which I call The Nightmare Before Christmas, and that was listeners' real ghost stories. And there was a particular story that, that gave a lot of people sleepless nights. But look, I got a lot of good feedback about the doll episode, so I thought, you know what? Maybe back end of this year, early next year, I'll add another couple of dolls to the gang, and I'll maybe spend a night somewhere alone with maybe three or maybe five haunted dolls for company and just see what the hell happens. I- I'm not committed to it, but it's something that I'm considering doing. Okay, so I have a scenario for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you buy your dolls, all right? Say you yeah. buy five dolls and right. they've all got different backstories. You know, one is an, uh, you know, a cheeky thief that got caught or a highwayman or whatever. Um, and yeah. then you've got your, your your witch and you've got your uh, your scallywag or whatever. And you, you get them all together. So you leave them in the room for a little while so they can all get to know each other. You have to hire a room that's got a king-size bed and you have to sleep with them in the bed. I can do that. And then you, and then you leave a recorder on and this time you get one oh. of those like night cameras that you can have yeah. in the room yeah, so yeah. that it's recording to see if any of them, you know, get out of the bed, yeah. move around, wink or turn their it's head not... or whatever. Yeah. That that kind I, of thing. I, I definitely th- think the one thing I missed having last time I did it was a, a night vision video camera, which I yeah. definitely should have had. I tried all sorts of stuff when I was with the doll the last time around. Like I had a, um, you know, like the laser grids that they take on investigations. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. had one of those set up um, with a, a uh, like me camera from me camera from me phone pointing at it saying can you show yourself but I think with a group of with a big gang of of the dolls in a big bed I'd quite happily give it a go um but yes as I say I'm I'm not committed to the idea and it seems like a terrible idea but it's one that keeps <laughs> rattling around in my head and I'm, I'm I may well do it well the thing is with uh, you know you go to okay you go, are you, I've, I've seen them. Everyone's seen them. You go to eBay, you you, you buy a, a, a doll. They're called, um, yeah. what they call? called? There's a name for them, aren't they? They're not like called dolls. They're called um, vessels. 
right vessels yeah. Yeah. haunted vessels so you got your 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 angry spirit uh, trapped in there because of the conjuring or whatever they put them in there or they've decided to live in there like a, a crab in one of those shells so that's inside there right either way it's in there and you buy it for i don't know you buy it for 10 pound and you get it mm-hmm. home and you decide then okay this is the the doll the haunted doll and i'm gonna do whatever stuff for it now it might not be it might be a load of old you know like you say somebody might have saw it in a charity shop brought it home yeah. gave it a backstory put it on ebay you buy it okay but maybe it's you right that are making it haunted maybe it's your imagination because not you directly but in, in person in general is so wanting it to be you know something going on with it that they are making it giving yeah. it uh uh, that kind of spookiness, maybe. Darren Brown did a thing, didn't he, where I can't remember the, the finer detail of it, but he wanted a group of people to manifest a spirit that didn't exist based on suggestion that there was a ghost that had a specific character. But yeah, I know, I know exactly what yeah. you mean. It's possible. I, I remember the uh, the experiment that was done uh, back in the day. But what was it, in, in the 19, 1970s <laughs> by the, the American students? Uh, they they mm-hmm. conjured a um... yeah. I think this was the um, inspiration for the the Darren Brown experiment um, in his episode called Seance. I think it was called. I give it some credence. Where if you if you believe enough in something like that, there's a possibility that you can give it some whatever it might be, some haunting or spookiness or, or whatever is frightening you about that thing. So yeah, I, I think that that is. Uh, you know, there's a possibility there. And, and when you had those experiences, when you were in that room, maybe, maybe it did move. Maybe it did turn the telly off. Maybe. Or on. Maybe. maybe. Or maybe it was coincidence. I'll never know. Well, you will know soon when you're in bed with five of them. And they're all the most maybe. evil dolls that you've got on eBay. Because they're all angry. And they're out for... Yeah. They're out for your soul, basically. Well, we'll just have to say... As I say, I'm not 100% committed to it, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll, see. well well, moving on from that, uh, mildly, um, you, you also say that you did the um, Railway Museum. W- with the Railway Museum, um, you did, was it an overnight or, or what? Yeah, it was a, I think it kicked off at about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the evening. It was in, through to the early hours of the morning. So yes, it wasn't overnight, but it was a it was a late one. And what was your um, you know, what was your general sort of uh, impression there? Did you have any experiences? I mean, it's always a challenge, I think, with um, organised investigations because I'm so used to doing investigations where it's me and three mm. other people in like four of us in a huge building to the point where, in theory, we could split up and all four of us could go somewhere different, and we are going to hear one another. But if you've got it, I think there was like thirty people there. And there's three or four main buildings to check out. And um, it was a very, very enjoyable night. But it was I think it was very it, it was very quiet. There was definitely things that happened. There was um there was a bit where we were in like I'd have to listen back to the episode to remember what the the room's called, but it was a workshop type room where there was definite noises and there was there was something seemed to be going on. But almost everything that we experienced, I think, could be, dare I say, rationalized away. Mm. But I mean that that's the thing. I'm the I don't tend to well, I mean only Patreon every month they get a, the, the the Patreons get a, a special ghost hunt related episodes, but episodes on the standard feed don't generally revolve around investigations. But when they do, I'm not gonna make stuff happen, if you know yeah. what I mean, for the sake of making no. stuff happen. The, the, I mean anybody who's been on an investigation who's listening to this will know that nine times out of ten, ninety-five times out of hundreds nothing happens or or something does happen it seems like a very small thing or it could easily be explained away the odds aren't in our favor when it comes to doing something that i'm planning on putting an episode out about i've already arranged like for example this summer coming so next month i'm going to do an investigation at a um appeal tower in northumberland hopefully it'll be an incredible evening but the odds are nothing will happen yeah so we'll just have to see we'll just have to see i mean talking appeal towers in April Patreon episode, it was I, I did I went to a Peel Tower in Northumberland called Preston Tower during the day, but it's not, it's a hidden gem, so there's not a lot of people know about it. And that episode came out on my Patreon last month, um, and 
I was there during the day for a couple of hours and I had the most remarkable audio recorded of me being in a lower floor. There's, a, there's two floors, well, three floors if you include the, the ground floor in the building. Okay. And I was on the first floor and on the second floor, you could clearly hear footsteps going up to the door that leads to the roof. It's clear as day. Everybody who's, like people who've heard it sent us messages saying, you can hear those footsteps. They're unmistakable. Just you in there. That I was the only person in the building. There isn't even any staff there. It's it's very much like an honesty box policy where you turn up. The peel towers next to the house where the people live, and you can either scan a QR code and pay a few quid, or you can drop money into a box. I was the only person there. I was the only person in the building. And as soon as I heard the noise, because it's a very narrow building and the footsteps are solid wood and they're very noisy, you get, like. I could be stood outside of the, the door, dare I say, at the bottom of the building and hear people walking walking around inside because it's so clear and there was nobody there. Like I heard footsteps going up to the roof and there's nobody there. You actually heard this, not on a playback, you actually heard it as you were there as in real time. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who listens to it can hear us say, can you hear that there's footsteps? And you can hear the footsteps clear as day on the recording because I, I was never concerned that the audio wouldn't be picked up because it's so loud. And it's such a narrow, echoey stone building that the the footsteps on those, that staircase, unmistakable. So did you go on up there and do a bit of uh, wandering around to see what what it could possibly have been? Or were you at a loss? Straight away. away. As soon as I I, I think, if I listen back to the recording, I think I say, can you hear those footsteps? And I'm straight out of the little room that I was in talking and off to to find the footsteps. And I mean, if you think about a castle where it's, it's not it's not your typical building. It's three floors. Each floor is the size of a room in a castle. Yeah. There's nowhere for anybody no. to be. I, I was the only person in the building. There was nobody there other than me and seemingly... I was the... Oh, all right, I'll, I'll rephrase that. I was the only living person there. And it's very... Um, the way that those buildings are built, because they're, you know, they're pretty solid and stone and and solid floors and yeah yeah 15th century so the sound would resonate quite loudly anyway because it would just be it would act like a sound box and yeah. the sound pollution from outside would be minimal because the other thickness of the walls yeah and it's not it's not near a busy road or anything like that there's nothing outside it's it, there's a tiny little country lane that leads to the the tower but to answer your question about Bowes railway museum to, I, I know i went off on a tangent there it was um a good night, but it was quiet. You know, anyone that goes into a place every week and has stuff happen is either incredibly lucky or they're just making it up. I've been to places where, yeah. as I say, you get so excited, you go there, you get your notepad out, you get your recorder out, you sit down, you wait, drink your coffee, you eat your sandwiches, you have a Kit Kat. Before you know it, it's midnight and you think absolutely nothing has happened. I might as well just been at home watching telly. Yeah, it's, it's not a hobby for the impatient, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> absolutely not. But... Moving on a little bit, before we wrap up, this one episode that I really want to talk about that you've, your most recent episode, which has a little bit of, um, I don't want to say macabre, but I always find this this kind of topic a little bit fascinating, simply because in the olden days, when there were battles, they were quite gruesome. And the, the craziest thing for me is thousands of people would go into battle and a lot of those people would sadly lose their lives. And they would yeah. literally, where they fell on the field, on the battlefield, they were basically buried. They were just, you know, mass graves were dug and they were just thrown in mm-hmm. uh, before their, you know, bodies were picked of all their jewellery or whatever they had, their possessions. And then they were covered yeah. up and just forgot about. And I just think that's that's crazy. That's like mind boggling. But you did a, a an episode on a, a place... Um, uh, Flodden Field, which is a, is it Northumberland? In is it is it is it yeah. Braxton? Yeah, it's right next. It's right next to Braxton. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's 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 in the middle of nowhere. It couldn't it couldn't well it could be more remote, but you'd struggle to find somewhere more remote. It's 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 um it's very unassuming if you don't know what happened there. There's a massive monument yeah. in the middle of the field, but beyond that. The signs throughout the field as well, but it'd be very easy just to drive past and have no one, no idea as to what happened there a little over five hundred years. It ago. just looks like farm fit, farmland. It just looks like rolling fields. Yeah. If you, if anyone out there listening can imagine the English countryside in summertime with rolling fields and a few trees on the hill tops, um, that's what it looks like. You would never, you would have never known that in like what is it, fifteen, fifteen, thirteen, something like that. 
15 to 30. There was a, there was a, a battle there, and uh, what was it, 14,000 people lost their lives? But it was between the Scots right. and the English, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, where they, the Scots uh, was, were battling with the English, and you know, and and it was just macabre, uh, and it was just yeah, just crazy. But I went to a um, uh, a a battlefield many many years ago, and we went to a uh, it was uh, I think it was an English Civil War, one of the one of the places where one of those big battles took place. It's just, you know, it looks like farmland now. It's just like, you know, there's a little side road and there's uh, bushes and there's cows eating their dinner and stuff. And they were explaining how the armies used the land as a, you know, to protect themselves and to how to, you know, that kind of stuff. When I was there, I just got this feeling of, um, of like hopelessness. I don't know what it was. It was it only lasted mm-hmm. a few moments, but it was like a feeling of like it was like a hopelessness feeling. It was very strange when you start to learn of what went on there and uh, how many people lost their lives. And it was in the, it was in the thousands. You know, in one day there was like thousands of people killed yeah. and and left to die where they fell. And it's just crazy. Your experience when you went there. I mean, because I know that you actually did a, a like a live recording there, didn't you? Yeah, I recorded the epi- the episode from. Flodden fields. Um, I mean, as I said, it's, it's about an hour away from where I live, so it's not that far. And I knew it would be quiet there, so I thought, yes, you know what, I'm going to go try something a little bit different, see what feedback I get, see if people enjoy me recording on location. And um, it was a it was a very worthwhile experience. I think in terms of what I felt, I felt isolated from everybody. I mean, I was there for a, a well over an hour recording the the audio and having to walk around and I saw one bloke just as I was walking back the car. It was the only car parked in the car park. There's nobody there. As I was reading the episode and recording the episode and it dawned on us that as you alluded to earlier on, well, almost 14,000 people killed in a period of less than three hours. Most of them were Scottish and it was the last time a, a monarch, mm-hmm. a, a, a British monarch was killed in battle. Because um, King James IV lost his life, King of Scotland at the time. And somewhere in that field, there's a yeah. pit with the majority of the bodies from that day just buried in it. And as I was talking, and it dawned on us that I could be stood on that spot at that very moment, I just felt a shiver pass through us. I mean, I, I did feel a sadness, I would say. like a, I felt a bit melancholy. But I think it was wasn't necessarily to do with where, well, it it was to do with where I was, but I think it was nothing paranormal. I think it was just the reality of, the stark reality of what happened all those years ago. I mean, I I had a very good listener story to go with Flood and Field as well. Uh, It it was a very well put together email from a, a listener from just north of the border in Scotland about what she experienced when she went along for the 500th anniversary celebrations right. in in 2013 and i think that that reading that um it it really did make us feel a little bit um not frightened but a little bit it, it made the place feel a little bit more spooky than maybe it would have been if i didn't have a a ghost story to read out it was um it was a very worthwhile experience and i think if you think about what happened all those years ago like man's inhumanity the man i mean even now in battle there's a little bit like if somebody dies they aren't just uh-huh. yeah buried where they fall you know and like the, the body's just left there for the border reavers as it was at that point in time just, just to yeah. come and take away anything of value the next morning it was the most recent episode that i've got out and i think anybody listening to it will hopefully appreciate the difference that was made by me recording it while i was there as opposed to the way i normally do things when i'm, I'm at home reading a script and also there's um an old farmhouse nearby that seems to have a lot of uh, paranormal activity I- inside of it so i'm thinking maybe that has something to do with the actual battle maybe they took people who were uh, you know wounded there to maybe try and save them or, or something like that but places like that all that emotion and all that anger and back then it was very um uh, you know, hands on. You, you, you literally. It was hand to hand combat back then. In the old days, it was all swords and 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 staffs and you know, literally 
in someone's face to the death. So it's it just completely, I can understand where if you're going to get an area that's, especially a battlefield, that's going to be emotionally charged and, and, and imprinted, maybe, maybe that's what is there. Maybe that is the emotions of the people that, as I said before, with these places that have been imprinted in that, in that environment. And that's what those people are picking up on. And yeah. not necessarily everybody's going to pick up on it. Maybe it's got to do with the person, maybe like, like yourself you're open-minded you go there you're not expecting things to happen but you're open to the fact that something might happen so maybe you pick up on something as where someone who is without sounding negative is maybe closed-minded to it and doesn't want to know it's not interested they go there because it's a walk they want to walk their dog they may not experience anything but i suggest that people if they want to learn more about it go listen to your episode and i'll I'll, it will all be linked in the show notes anyway but before we check out on this episode, I just wanted to find out, you've told us a little bit about your projects in the summer, but um, looking a bit further afield, got any other ideas of where you might be going? Well, that's a good question. I don't, I mean, in terms of growing the podcast, I don't know, I think, because it's fortnightly, I'm doing quite a lot of like themed months now. I've started dabbling with the idea of recording on location. I've got another episode lined up for July which is recorded on location as well in Northumberland. It was at Boland, well, I'll tell you, it's at Boland Lake Country Park, where in 2002, there was a spate of Bigfoot-type sightings, um, and it made national news uh, to the point where a professional monster hunter, mm. um, Jonathan Downs, a bloke from down in um, Devon, led a team, um, I think it was funded by the BBC, to come and look for the beast. So, I'm, I, I mean, I am trying to do... Um, things like that and like the thing that I did with the like the night I spent with the doll I, I want to give people what they want so the more feedback that I get in terms of what people like and if people have got any ideas for what they want us to do by all means send them over I mean the, the podcast proved far more popular than I ever expected and it seems to be growing month on month but for example this month mm-hmm. in October the podcast will go back to weekly and October is going to be vampire month so I've got a month's worth of episodes. So there's going to be a weekly episode about somewhere that has ties to to vampires, and that's going to culminate in a big Halloween special. Which, and I'll tell you because this will be an exclusive because it's I've not mentioned this anywhere. But that's going to focus on Whitby. But I mean, I am going to try and do more things. I want to do live ghost walks. So I've got a couple of scripts written for um, places where I'm going to go and record ghost walks on location, like which, which is a bit of an evolution of what I did at Flodden, mm. where I'm not just talking about one place. Um, but there is going to be exciting stuff coming up. I just want to make sure that whatever I'm giving is what people want. If people send us emails saying, or, or people send us messages on, on Twitter, or X as it's called now, or, or Instagram saying, oh, I prefer it when you do the episodes when you're recording in your microphone in in your little room um, and you don't maybe you aren't out and about so there isn't the the, the wildlife sounds at the background then I'd love to to get that kind of feedback because that's the only way that I'm really able to ensure that I'm giving people what they want to hear but get lots of lovely feedback about the podcast and I'd like to think that what I'm putting out is what people want from me but yeah I'm trying to to mix it up a little bit now that I've got four and eighty episodes so i can i can invest a little bit more time in try a little bit of everything and um yeah. i got a, a few plans for the for the warmer months you know make the most of them uh to try a few things but uh yeah it's just to see what works anyway rob thanks very much for coming and joining me on this episode um of course uh, all all of your links to your podcast and how people can listen uh, will be in the show notes so don't worry people and i really uh, strongly advise you to listen to rob's latest episode because yeah i think you'll enjoy it if you like that kind of stuff it's uh, it's very well done and obviously rest of his episodes as well and also check out his patreon because you get uh, exclusive episodes on there as well so it's all good value for money thanks for listening everyone uh, thanks for joining me again, Rob. Um, of course, we're, we're, we're going to try and do some collabs as well in the near future. Hopefully, we can, we can work something out, which will, will be interesting for everyone. But that's in the future. Who knows what the future might bring? Um, but until uh, the next episode, thanks for everyone for listening. And uh, talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.